I'm Nathan Simmons, and I saw a filling station in flames. <laughs> I'm Dustin Goes to Hollywood. <laughs> and I'm Mally Moore, and this is the Silver Linings Playlist, and Jesus ain't got nothing to do with this place. Oh my god, that guy. Boy, I have so many notes about that Me guy. too, me too. <laughs> Monologue guard. Well, look, before we go any further, we gotta, we gotta bring him back, uh-huh. because he was here last week, mm-hmm. and if you didn't tune in, you missed out, but yeah. this week... How do we want to? How do we want to build this this guest that we have come on? Is it guy who's seen the letters H A L O W E N <laughs> together in some sort of combination? Dustin, you're talking about him as if he were a man. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, guy who is aware that the child star of this movie has a podcast. Yeah. He knew the guy who did The Fog did a movie about a guy in a mask one time. <laughs> I'm the guy that likes this movie better than last week's movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. The Pump King himself. <laughs> I, I think all four of us might might like this movie better than last week's movie. Yeah. Um, but to separate him, yeah, this is a guy who if you said, hey, on October 31st there's a holiday and they made a movie about that holiday, he'd be like, say what? There's C- Candy Corn Day the movie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, of course, JT Kelly returning. Yeah, yeah. yeah Trick or Treat was great. Also known by his street name, JT Two Phones. <laughs> so they call me. Yeah, Dustin. Dustin called up JT and was like, "We're gonna we're recording the new season." And he says, "Please, you know, better not try that Halloween shit with me." <laughs> <laughs> no, he actually texted me. He was like, "Hey, we're recording Halloween 4 And I was like, "Can I just drive five and a half hours and yeah. do it there?" <laughs> <instead>? Sure. sure. <laughs> I'm watching it right now. I can see it as clear as breasts and blue suede shoes. <laughs> I can see it now, Dustin. Wait, isn't the line rust on blue suede shoes? <laughs> no, it is not. No, it's nut on some blue suede shoes. That's just never getting out. According to the subtitles, it's breasts. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait. Okay. So for those who are unaware, the unaffiliated, this is, of course, Halloween 4. Colon. <laughs> Guys, get this. Movie film for theaters. <laughs> <laughs> get, get this. The return uh-huh. of your boy Michael Myers. Yeah. He's back. They might as well have said, it's not killer masks again, y'all. <laughs> Halloween 4, we we're, we fixed it. <laughs> we're sorry. <laughs> Halloween 4, we fucked up. We, yeah. we fucked up. Halloween 4, the fans. Because we're bringing back... The guy that we all know you want to see yeah. is, of course, your return of uh, old Mikey Myers. And this this won, like, the fan moment at the Oscars that year, yeah, right? Yeah, like, they played this it. Was, yeah, yeah. What? Michael Myers entering the Speed Force. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, the podcast you're listening to, if this is your first foray into our show, welcome. This is a very- I'm fucking sorry. <laughs> this is a very- We're a very welcoming podcast, unless you uh, like the Hellraiser movies, in yeah. which case, I don't know what to tell you. Also, we've been recording for almost two hours now so <laughs> strap in yeah so what we do is we watch movies like halloween 4 that just have endings that are not so uh, neatly tied up in a l- nice little bow mm-hmm. like uh in uh daniel harris's hair here <laughs> that's how you know she's a lady michael myers they put a little bow in her hair that's right yeah and we try to find the good in those things we try to find something positive to say mm-hmm. for the characters by the time the credits roll and you know, I'm sure if you look back in our in our back catalog, you'll notice this is not our first time we're covering a <laughs> Halloween movie, and we're covering them in the same order that AMC plays them in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For some reason, yeah. whatever the fuck we feel <laughs> like. What the, fuck? what the fuck is with that? What? Why are they doing it like that? What was it? It was four, two, seven, six, one. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. That sounds about right. This machete cut, like you watch Star Wars to get the right, full right. story. This movie, man, I, I, it's not nearly as bad as some of these other Halloween movies get to, but man, it's just, it doesn't feel like a Halloween movie to me. It's a Terminator movie. It is a Terminator movie. That's a very good way of putting it. Yeah. JT and I were watching a little bit of it before we started recording here, mm-hmm. and I, I think the biggest problem for me, aside from the characters and the plot and all that stuff, is <laughs> just the severe lack of Dean Cundy. Yeah. Like, you feel this movie doesn't look like Halloween anymore. It's flatter. It's, yeah. yeah. It, 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 it's weird, because I think where this movie succeeds is when it tries to kind of forge its own path, mm-hmm. and where it hurts it is when... There are times when the movie is essentially recreating shots and set pieces from the original, Mm -hmm. just not shot as well or with as much thought put into it. Uh, A a critique that, you know, we've... (laughs) Leveled at the David Gordon Green movies as well. Yeah. yeah. And also, I mean, I'm assuming it's probably either either money or that she just didn't like the script. But I mm. I would like to see Jamie Lee Curtis in this movie. 
Like just a little bit. Other than her headshots. Yeah. yeah. Other than it's the return of Michael Myers. Why can't it be the return of Laurie Strode? Why why do I gotta wait four movies from now? Well, <laughs> when later when we discuss what Halloween four could have been, yeah. we will discuss Jamie Lee Curtis. I'm looking forward to that. But I will say, this is my third favorite Halloween movie, guys. Really? <laughs> I have I have a lot of love for this one. I it's do not too. bad. It's not bad. This is when when we were putting the schedule together for last season, I had Halloween four on here until I was like, no, we should do 2018 because Kills is finally coming out. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, this was, I mean, we'll get in, I guess we'll get in, are we getting into our history with this movie already? Yeah, go ahead, just go ahead. This was, uh, this was the second one I watched. I saw them. Yeah, really? Yes. (laughs) Because I was, I was watching these through TV airings back in the day. Mm -hmm. AMC, bro. AMC played this (laughs) all the fucking time. Mm -hmm. And I really dug this one. Yep. Uh, Maybe it was because also it wasn't quite as uh, scary as the others or it feel it has a little bit of an action movie tone to it but I really gravitated towards this one and there's I mean Loomis is my favorite character in the franchise so like if you're looking for a showcase of Donald Pleasance doing the most oh my god this is this is like really good oh buddy Loomis is unhinged even more so than usual in this movie I mean it and it, it there is a through line between this one and the next movie where he's like putting a gun in a cop's face and yeah. being like Michael Myers is outside Charlie like <laughs> well he's got a history of pointing guns at cops and having no repercussions mm-hmm. no oh, yeah. Loomis said a cab and I respect mm-hmm. him for it the uh this <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I I have a real soft spot for this one, and it's hard for me to separate how much of that is nostalgia and how much of that is quality. Yeah. But I'm I'm with Mally. Like this is in the upper echelon of the sequels for me. Yeah, it, it's in the top half of the movies for me. Sure. Um, but Mally, what about you? Six kind of same history that you watched it on TV a lot. Pretty much. Like I saw. Like yeah, I'd seen the original Halloween, and then I'd never seen any of the sequels until. AMC was just fucking chugging Halloween four and five out mm-hmm. every year. Did you did you have the same thing where you saw the TV edit of Halloween two first yep. that has like all the extra scenes yep. of Lori like yep. r- r- rolling around in bed and not getting up? Yep. <laughs> Halloween two is the proto Halloween kills. I'll <laughs> say it. Uh, yeah, I agree. Sure. Uh, I saw the original and then. I, I, when Rob Zombie's first one was coming out, I watched them all. Nice. And so I watched them in order. And I mean, it, it's probably not the best way to do it, honestly, because you just get diminishing returns mm-hmm. on almost every one of them up to that point. Um, JT, look, I, I know you're not familiar that much with the Halloween movies. So <laughs> this one, there's this guy, Michael Myers, right? And he, he's done this. I, I know the number would confuse you. He's only done this twice before. Twice, but this is number four. I, I know, I know. You gotta, you gotta bear with me on this one. Okay. <laughs> well, it took a long time after all the children on Earth died. They <laughs> had to, they had to wait a little while. <laughs> well, <laughs> they had to repopulate, repopulate to get a body count, right? Only, only the children, only the children on, on the, the West, West Coast. Coast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Stop it! <laughs> I don't remember in what order I watched these in. Uh-huh. I remember, of course, watching them A and C as a kid and stuff. But one thing I do remember is renting this from the video store yeah. for the first time and the box art being completely misleading yep. on what this dude's mask looked like. Yep. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Also, his head's not that big. Yeah. <laughs> the, mask, the mask on the cover is just like a screenshot from Halloween 2, isn't it? It is. Yes. Yes. And it's also like four times bigger than that house. So we're talking about a giant here. <laughs> And they reuse, they basically reuse assets from this movie for the poster for Halloween 5 because they've got Jamie in her clown costume and still the mask from Halloween 2. Uh (laughs) Well, and it's funny you're talking about how big his head is because that comes into play in one of the unused (laughs) Halloween 4 scripts. That's right. That's right. I want someone to uh, correct, like there I fixed it, Reddit or something, where (laughs) you just put the actual mask that they used on the (laughs) box art cover. That would be the funniest fucking poster. (laughs) Holy (laughs) shit. <laughs> well, we we kind of saw that with those new Scream Factory Blu-rays, where like even like nice artwork can't make that mask look good. No, yeah. no. And listener, if you haven't listened to our Halloween Six episode where we discussed the mask, because this one is is like we like to refer to around here as the Who, who Me mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> since since we're mentioning Halloween Six, I just w- I want to address it immediately. Uh huh. If Halloween Six Michael chugs peanut butter, yes. <laughs> Halloween Four Michael slurps marshmallow cream, jeez, <laughs> like soup. Because this motherfucker is out here looking like John Carpenter's Stay Puft. <laughs> yeah. 
He's so little. He's so little in this movie. He's wearing, he's literally wearing hockey pads. <laughs> isn't this though, but isn't this the same guy who plays Michael in part six? Oh. Where, where were the hockey pads in six? <laughs> it is. It's George P. Wilbur in this movie. Wilbur, yeah. But then they, didn't they swap, uh, in six, they swap actors? Like towards the reshoots. Yeah, 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 yeah they did. Uh, JT and I actually went last night with uh, my wife Priscilla to Halloween Horror Nights in Universal, and mm-hmm. they had a Halloween house yeah. <laughs> that we went through. And it was only the first movie, basically. Uh-huh. But they did get me once with a jump scare, and it was <laughs> it was the <laughs> just someone came out and chucked like just chucked peanut butter at your just, head, just throwing jiff at me. No, it was it was Michael with the sheet over his head and the glasses on <laughs> nice. with Bob's glasses. The one time Michael's being a scamp is the one time that scared me. <laughs> That's good. I'm sorry. The one time <laughs> <laughs> the scamp scare, the scampiest scares of that movie. So also, this is a little belated, but since Nathan mentioned it, I have to play it. Stop it! <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> Michael's a little less scampy in this movie. A little he less is. scampy, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, he's been asleep for ten years. He's shaking it off. <laughs> yeah, he's he's, oh, he's the fuck. He's gone full T one thousand at this point. <laughs> yeah, the next movie he steals a dude's car and lets his girlfriend suck on his fingers before he kills her. Like, <laughs> well, he steals so many cars. This guy is just is is batting like a perfect average with stealing cars in these movies. He's the really the Dom Toretto of horror. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> oh boy, it's the GTA of never mind. <laughs> GTA 6, Haddonfield. <laughs> oh, God, I'd play it. I'd play the shit out of it. Let's get into the uh, the history of the production with Halloween 4. Yeah. Or at least the, the, the details surrounding what happened with it. Because as Mally has hinted, we're going to get really into the depths of what happened with this movie. Uh-huh. Oh, buddy. The year is 1988. The director is Dwight H. Little. Mm-hmm. The movie stars Donald Pleasance. <laughs> Ellie Cornell, Daniel Harris, and Michael Pataki. I think is how you pronounce that last name. Yes. Sure. Yeah. The budget's $5 million, and it managed to gross only $17 million worldwide, and currently sits at a 31% on Rotten Tomatoes. I get. I would swap this and uh, fucking last Hell week's movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, Mustafa Akkad actually said that this was the most successful Halloween movie, and I was like, the numbers do not back that yeah, up at all. Yeah. What the fuck you're looking at, man? Because <laughs> this, this, and five were completely independent films. Right. There was no studio backing these. Which it it shows. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest. Like, and the fact that this didn't make that much money. If it then be like, fuck it, we're going into five. Mm-hmm. And I know five could not possibly have made more money than this. No, it didn't. And five, I mean, five killed the series for six years. Yeah. And then for six to come back and they're like, we're going to keep making more. And I'm like, it's amazing. It's, yeah. it's truly amazing. These these all got theatrical releases, right? Yes. Yeah. That's amazing. To date, none of the Halloween movies have gone direct to video. That's amazing. They almost have a number of times. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But it's never, it has yet to happen. Resurrection was close, I think, right? Very close. Yeah. I think that one probably should have gone. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't have hurt. Straight to the USA Network. <laughs> <laughs> After suits and all new Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's let's visit the trailer because um, I I don't think I've seen this trailer, so I'm excited to see it. It's very 80s. I I can imagine. Are we gonna take bets? White flashes voiceover. You know, I think we're a couple years away from constant white flashes. Yeah, you might be right. You might be right. Let's see. Let's find out. Ten years ago, on the night of October, okay, we start with a Texas a Chainsaw knock <laughs> for real. Fell victim to an escaped killer. Under the cover of darkness, he carried out the most horrifying mass murder on record. Not really. Yeah, yeah. For real. people in cold blood. We've talked about this. I, I always that's that night, one of the funny things no about 2018 to me is everyone's like, can you believe a guy murdered four people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. The most murder. infamous killer of all time, Michael Myers. <laughs> like, this is America. We have a school shooting that fucking does bigger numbers than that for every real. few months. No fucking kidding, right? That's some rookie numbers, Michael. You gotta get those numbers yeah, up. Yeah, you better get those Jeez. up. Michael Myers has come home. He the end of the movie, again, in the trailer. Yeah. Oh. Night of unholy terror. <laughs> also, that shot makes Jamie seem like I know it's it's a trick because it's supposed to be Michael in the trailer, but that means Jamie's like six feet tall. Right. In the shot. Well, it's like it's like six year old Michael Myers having Deborah Hill's hands. Yes. <laughs> wow. 
I love God. I love that Michael just cry babies in this movie. It's great. <laughs> He also has like big Four. hitcher energy in, in the first <laughs> half of this movie. Oh yeah. Maybe nobody knows how to stop it. God, I completely forgot he had butts a windshield. Yeah. <laughs> Let me in. <laughs> oh god, that was good. Let's let's discuss this movie. My first note mm-hmm. is the first card you get in the movie is just Mustafa Akkad's name. Yeah. Who is, of course, if you don't know, the longtime producer of these Halloween franchise. Mm-hmm. But Man. It's good seeing his name in the credits, it is. man. It just feels right. It does, yeah. But the part that says present comes so much later that I <laughs> it thought does. it was billing him as like he was starring in this movie. And I was like, <laughs> Mustafa God in. And I was like, boy, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> I love the opening credits of this. Like I do, the too. Like, setting the vibe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's Alan Howarth comes in to do the score. He, he you know, previously helped Carpenter with the with other scores. And this is like... The stuff that works best in this soundtrack is when he's doing this sort of ambient, like, mood music, just, right? Mm-hmm. Like, just mm-hmm. dark ambient tones. Yes. I, yeah, and the, just all the fall, like, iconography and everything. I do absolutely love the opening titles here. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad at all. My first real set of notes is this security guard <laughs> at this this hospital i guess that mike is it is it it's not um it's not smith's grove yes it's not smith's grove okay but this guy gets all the trailer lines he does yeah. <laughs> like every line he has. he's describing their patient to them <laughs> <laughs> when when will these motherfuckers learn to just stop transporting michael places right, like that's a good he, point. he gets out he gets out every time just put him in a cell underground throw away the fucking key like yeah stop trying to move him <laughs> again it's like dom toretto don't put him in a car <laughs> don't put him in a car his doctor of all people <laughs> shot him six times doesn't is it like someone screams and then one of the the lady goes jesus oh jesus, jesus got, got nothing, nothing to do in this place this. yeah it is set up payoff with every line of this guy i mean it, every line is yippee kaye motherfucker it is. Like, he get, and then he's like on the way down he's like this is where uh, society world. sends its rejects yes <laughs> and then he they hit the bottom floor and the door opened and he goes like what welcome, welcome to, to hell. hell like come on dude you get what you fucking deserve <laughs> <laughs> he, he give this guy all the lines like that dude was just like he was just like trying he's like i'm gonna try a few lines see yeah. what works and they were like oh bro they are all working <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're all going in his demo reel for sure and he really should have like given them more of a heads up instead of like instead of telling them about their own patient he's like anyway when you get down here hold your breath all the pipes are leaking dude there's steam everywhere <laughs> why are there so what is going on with the plumbing in this place why is everything steaming yeah, yeah. why are they in like the Tower of Terror from Disney. <laughs> Next to Michael's bed where he's supposedly been passed out for 10 years, there's just an open steam pipe that's yeah. just shooting shit out. That's what's wrong with him. Well, that's why he woke up. They got him out of the sauna. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, say I mean say say what you will, Michael's skin probably gonna look great. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's glowing under those bandages. Glowing. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's because of all the burn scars but sure. still um you know looking good ish I, I like that this doctor casually mentions to the people that are taking michael that he hopes dr loomis dies yeah <laughs> he will retire or die yeah that's it hopefully he says hopefully in there I was like, oh cool okay that's what we're going yes yeah. what is going on with michael's hands in this movie with it specifically his fingers because <laughs> you, like you mentioned he's a fucking terminator because he kills this guy in the ambulance with a with thumb. His thumb with a thumb thumb yeah and then later on he cuts one of the rednecks with his fingers yeah like ripping the guy's jaw out. this was part of reshoots too like uh mustafa Khan thought the movie wasn't violent enough so they called in john carl beekler to come in and just like <laughs> do some extra gore effects for a few days wild the him killing like it just makes me think of the scene from everything everywhere all at once <laughs> where she like flexes her finger sure. yeah yep. yeah it's intense absolutely it is it just makes you think of too about how much of Rob Zombie's Halloweens weren't that inspired either because another hospital escape yeah. in that one too. Stop trying to move in places. Yeah. <laughs> just leave him in one place. Yeah. Or strap him down uh, harder. I don't know. Put this motherfucker in carbonite. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like that Eddie Izzard bit where, you know, you put a mass murderer on house arrest yeah. and you're like, just don't go to that fucking house. Yeah. <laughs> like, done. Yep. <laughs> or just hear me out. 
you could just shoot him. Yeah. Uh, you got him in the bed. Just That's not bad either. Yeah. He's been taking a nap for 10 years. Cut his head off. Yes, yes. <laughs> Go for the head. Absolutely. His head. There's apparently, they, they shot a scene that would have opened with Loomis getting like thrown back by the explosion. I need that scene. I need that scene. And telling them to, it, it, basically what Laurie does in Halloween Kills, where they're like dousing him with a fire extinguisher. Yeah. And Loomis is yelling, let him burn. We need that scene I of agree. Loomis because otherwise I'm sitting here in the theater like, what? How? Loomis is also a Terminator. Yes. Is he also whatever Michael's made up of? Because yeah. this dude survived too. What the fuck? Loomis is made of liquid metal because his fucking scars change location throughout the movie. <laughs> yeah. It also... It also makes no sense because th- the explanation was, oh, he'd get blown out of a, a window or something. Yeah. But there is, he's in the hallway. There's no fucking window. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's literally no fucking. Hey, Dr. Loomis, <laughs> you ever, you ever shoot out of a wall in the hospital? <laughs> <laughs> there's literally no fucking way this guy survives the explosion. There's just sure. no way. No. Uh, but you gotta do what you gotta do. I mean, I, I don't know. That's the least of my problems with this movie by far. But I also, with that, you get Loomis has got. 20% of his body burned. Right. And it's just, it's, it's just isolated to one side of his face. Mm-hmm. He d- did pretty fucking good. And, and, and his hands. Yeah, and his hands. Did pretty yes. fucking good, if you ask me, for surviving an ether explosion. And he made sure, yeah, he made sure to show the, yeah, he made sure to show the doctor and the audience. Mm-hmm. Check this shit out. <laughs> bro, 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 look at this. We get introduced to the mask in probably the, one of the funniest ways possible with this nightmare sequence that Jamie's having. Yeah. Jamie has a nightmare about Michael's new mask. Yep, yep. I mean, that's just, that's just clean writing is all that is. Yeah. That's just set up for her psychic abilities in the next one. <laughs> oh, my God. I I don't remember anything about Five. At, uh, five is the one I've seen the least. Guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say right now, I can't wait for when we cover Five. Yeah. Because the Halloween Fives that could have been mm-hmm. are, are fucking buck wild. <laughs> wild. Yeah. I think that's probably the one I've seen the least, honestly, if I think about it. Probably Five. Yeah. Um, But yeah, she gets it like... This this nightmare sequence is funny just because when he sits up from under the bed and that's it's no there's no other way to describe it other than who me uh-huh. like, huh? <laughs> yeah it just sits up like 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 he woke up from a nap just huh yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> My, it's he scared himself he he, inter- <laughs> yes. he interrupts Jamie looking at Laurie's like production stills yep <laughs> and she's thinking oh what could have been we <laughs> we get a, our first real like it's so crazy to me because I think George P Wilbur is pretty good in Halloween 6, but here he's got like weird G.I. Joe joints. <laughs> like his arms are always like at an angle. He he stabs like he has to hold use his whole body. He moves like Batman. Yeah. <laughs> like he has to like bend over to stab somebody. It's so strange. It's like pre Kampu grip too. So it's <laughs> yes, just you bend yes. at the waist and the elbows. Yeah. He's Destro, basically. I, I do like this this nightmare scene, though, because I do like the slow motion. That's good, yeah. Of Rachel running in and everything. Like, it does feel... But it's, like, the only time they do anything like that. Yeah. It's weird. Guys, Rachel is the fucking best. She's Dude, great. she is so great. Yeah, I was about to say, Ellie Cornell is so good. I also like that... What is... Okay, we had a debate about this. What is Jamie holding when they open the closet door? It's the shoebox full of photos, right? Yeah. It's a shoebox. Okay. I couldn't tell because we were J- JT and I were watching the the dead meat um, episode on on Halloween Four. <laughs> yeah, and I I thought what he thought it was that it was a box of, ho- of Mountain Dew or something <laughs> like that because it's exactly the old logo. I was like, who keeps Mountain Dew in the closet? <laughs> it does look like a retro style Mountain Dew. That's why she hasn't slept in four days. She's just been doing the Dew. <laughs> That's why she's having nightmares. Oh my god, she's I'm jacked up on Mountain Dew. <laughs> she's gonna scissor kick Michael in the back of the head. Michael's gonna come at you like a spider monkey. <laughs> I like we both we both go for the joke. <laughs> Oh yeah, of course. Rachel Cornell or Ellie Cornell as Rachel is like maybe my favorite final girl in the series aside from yeah. uh Lori. Like yeah. boy, they do her dirty in five. They yeah, sure dude. do. Oh, but I, I just I I love this relationship between the two of them. I buy it. I think that some of the some of the drama, like the teen drama, is really manufactured in this movie, but I think she plays it really well. Who do you think gets it worse? Her in the next movie or I can't remember her name, but the final girl from Friday the thirteenth into part two. Alice? Yeah. Alice, I well, I don't know, because both of them both of them just kind of like get shoved under a bed essentially you yeah, know like they're, like, just like, they're yeah, thrown out yeah which feels feels weird like they would even 
bother. I would say Rachel gets it worse because the her death scene in five is so voyeuristic and gross. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, there was something that she said in that in the first or in four. Yeah, she didn't want to do anything like a shower scene. She didn't yeah. want to do anything like that. And then this one, uh, the, they showed up on set like, "Hey, we're killing you off." Yeah, and there's going to be a shower scene. So oh. it was just kind of like a Jesus gross. And the original her original death scene was they were he was going to shove the scissors down her throat yeah and she was like please just don't do like come on give me some dignity when i'm going out like yeah such a bummer yeah also a bummer brady was ready to make a commitment <laughs> <laughs> brady is the fucking worst yeah jesus is brady brady the cameron of these movies uh yeah <laughs> he's yeah. So? Yeah. fucking brutal yeah. but i'm i'm cheering the whole time brady would for sure participate in the kissing of a tiger <laughs> <laughs> okay cameron was drunk okay don't you fucking dare Brady did this on his own free will. Just like a man to uh, make ex- make excuses. <laughs> I just kind of feel bad for Cameron. <laughs> I kind of feel bad for Cameron because I know what happens to him. He does go out pretty, un- like, unceremoniously. Yeah. <laughs> like, way too hard. <laughs> nah, deserved it. For sure. So, anyone who lives near Haddonfield mm-hmm. and owns overalls mm-hmm. is just the unluckiest person ever. Sure. Get, r- get rid of those jumpsuits, man. Like, oh my god. it's It's like my uncle used to say. It could be raining titties. He said that? <laughs> no, it could be raining titties, and I could look up and still catch a dick. <laughs> and now, I, wow. <laughs> wow. I never really understood that phrase. What a savant with words. Can we get your fucking <laughs> uncle on the show? <laughs> Call him up. Call him up right now. <laughs> I never really understood that phrase. Sure. Until I was thinking about how unlucky it is to own overalls near Haddonfield. Yeah. You're gonna die. Especially if you, like, Michael just keeps getting lucky. Lucky with these these jumpsuits that are exactly his size. They they are not though because there is a shot when he's on the roof later in the movie mm-hmm. and he's wearing like these are like some fucking high water pants. <laughs> oh, yeah. he, they're like they're up to his calf like he's fucking Danny Zuko or something. <laughs> <laughs> Which it's funny that every Halloween movie that has gotten made. He's pretty much kept his classic look, you know, mask yeah. and overalls mm-hmm. in almost every unmade script. They changed his costume. You can't. Well, and that, that's something I was going to say. Like, I, maybe this is controversial. I would love if he stayed in the bandages because I think that shot of him in the gas station. That would have been fucking cool. Yeah. That shot in the gas station is so dope. How does he see? How does he see out of those bandages? <laughs> like, know. like, o- like overalls with the bandages on his face? Yeah. 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 That'd be fucking rad. Yeah. It could do like a Friday the 13th with the burlap sack yeah. kind of situation. I, which I think is a pretty good look, honestly. I, like, I agree. Yeah. So Luma shows up to this restaurant slash auto shop slash gas station. Yeah. Slash Lincoln Memorial. Yeah. The Lincoln Memorial. <laughs> he's screaming for someone to come out. Like he gets out of the car. And he's like, hello. It's not New Jersey, Loomis. You got to pump your own gas. I'm sure. sorry. Just, <laughs> sure. I don't know what to tell you. Um, but he gets, I, here's what I don't understand about this scene. And I don't think there's an explanation, but uh-huh. he goes in there. Michael's first of all, pretty scampy that he mm-hmm. not only cuts the phone cord, but then, but then puts the phone back on the receiver. Yeah. And has punched the phone. Like the phone yeah. is smashed. Yeah. yeah. But Loomis sees him. Does not break eye contact with him. Oh, yeah. my God. Decides to shoot. How, and Michael's a magician. And then, and then he's he gone. just disappears. It, in front of his eyes. Yeah. Like, and, my, and Loomis, like, kind of looks around, like, back. And, like, yeah. How the fuck did that happen? He almost has, like, a Scooby-Doo, like, exit frame. Yeah. Do you guys notice? He yeah. got like, he leans to the... <laughs> <laughs> so, the only thing I can think of that would make that decision go in that way would be uh-huh. maybe the audience... Or they want the audience to think that Loomis is going crazy. Oh, I think I, I've already convinced. I don't need another scene. <laughs> but <laughs> this dude's out of his fucking mind. <laughs> but don't don't show the dead mechanic hanging from the chains before that, right. and then we'll have that. Yeah, I do like the I, I like the speech that Loomis has though. Like, if you want to kill somebody, take me. Leave them alone. Uh, God damn you, Michael! <laughs> like he just starts shooting but at him. I feel like at the end of Halloween two, you 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 kind of know this is a a pointless endeavor to be like sure. having a discussion with this dude. <laughs> I also like that the explosion is perfect. Like happens perfectly to also knock down the telephone wires. Yep. Yep. Oh yeah, yep. how they they got a young Michael Bay to come in and direct this fucking <laughs> scene. <laughs> sure. First off, how did he get that? Ex- explosion to happen <laughs> it's so extra my issue with michael just like like he disappears seemingly out of nowhere multiple times in this movie mm-hmm. and it's like no, like 
I'm sorry. Someone with like the same body as Dustin is not moving this fucking quick. <laughs> <laughs> nope. But he, he disappears in the, the store too when Jamie gets the costume. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you think it's, oh, she's just seeing things, but nope, he's there. Why in the <laughs> world? Is this town still right? selling right? this mask? Right? So <laughs> Dustin and I, we were ju- we just saw that scene. I was like, maybe that's why the mask was so different. Is because they were like, we have to do a knockoff of it, so it's yeah. not offensive. Yeah, we have to we have to change the uh, the look of it so it's not so offensive. And sure, I, I would say it's like the the scene in Aqua Teen with the Plutonians. It's like, is that a pop up girl? No, can't you see she's got a mohawk in a wheelchair? We're not getting sued. <laughs> like, it's like exactly what it is. it's like when you go to Spirit Halloween and they don't have a Beetlejuice suit; they have a bug guy suit yeah. yeah well it's like it's like you can copy my homework but change it just enough so the teacher <laughs> sure. doesn't think yeah. you copied we have michael myers at home yeah it's not jason <laughs> Voorhees. it's hockey hockey serial killer like, right yeah <laughs> yeah i i don't know i don't know and then of course michael apparently gets two masks because mm-hmm. as we find out later on he's got uh, one that's blonde <laughs> sure for no reason at all. so like that is that is so baffling how do they not think that people won't notice that <laughs> there's there's a lot of stuff like that in the production history of this movie where like he was like we didn't have time to reshoot it with the correct mask why they what? lost what's wrong with it apparently they tried to <laughs> use a, a mold like the original mask and distress it and they fucked it up instead so they just like made a knockoff oh, but all you have to do is spray paint that blonde hair but right. Like, that's, that's they that's also they apparently they lost like six hours of footage because no one on crew realized Donald Pleasance was wearing a hat and a bunch of shots. <laughs> Like, he was, Keep that in. Keep it in. He was really, he was really cold and just wore a hat during several scenes. Keep it in. And Donald Pleasance was also apparently drunk through a lot of the sh- the shoot, so no. he never pointed it out. No, yeah. I don't believe you. Amazing. <laughs> That's why his car blew up so well because there was fucking bottles in the back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Danielle Harris tells this story where she was like, "I remember as a kid thinking his breath was kind of funny, and then as an adult realizing, oh, that was bourbon." Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, speaking of uh of daniel harris jamie yeah. I, I think we missed the opportunity guys to introduce jt on the podcast for this episode oh. we should have been chanting jt's in orbit <laughs> god <laughs> which what? do you th- do you think in halloween ends we're gonna get an allison's an orphan chant? oh god. my god i hope so oh i hope I- I watched this movie with past and future guest Ashley McLaughlin, and she goes, holy fuck. (laughs) (laughs) She's like, these are cartoon villain children. It's a continuation of the trend of bullies in movies are so much worse than they are in real life. Yes. (laughs) Well, and again, it was like last week. It was the 80s. You could make fun of orphans openly. It's like that. It's like that Donald Glover stand up bit where it's like, that's why your mom's in a fucking wheelchair. (laughs) Anyway, I'll see you later. (laughs) No. No basketball later. Uh, I, I just, that kid that's like, what is Jamie going to go for Halloween? She's not going to go anything. Her mom's fucking dead. <laughs> it's wild. It's, brutal. it's truly wild. Kids are fucking horrible. Oh, man. I mean, it, it stands the testament that Danielle Harris is crushing it in this movie. She's so good in this. Which she's outside finally and she's like and she says i'm okay I'm she, yeah, okay. she's fanning herself going you're okay oh you're okay I, was, I told gt i was like it's like she just saw her ex I, like right. i'm in dinner with somebody <laughs> like, oh my god I, i've touched on this on the show before i was a bullied kid in elementary school and i I've, don't believe you <laughs> why would anyone ever i don't believe on you. you no but now well now i'm cool as fuck <laughs> i got four podcasts uh, uh, does anyone want to point out that he's still getting bullied in his 30s. <laughs> I, I don't, I, guys, I review comic books all on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, uh, he's an adult virgin. <laughs> so going, okay, going back here, Michael uh, drives beside Loomis's car and it explodes. That's uh-huh. right. As, what, as it does. Uh-huh. You you know the episode's really gone off the rails when JT has to bring us back to yeah, us. keeping <laughs> us honest. <laughs> Yeah, and, and so this is Loomis meets uh, the the road preacher, right? Oh. Mr. Sayer. Oh, my God. This this fucking guy. Are you sure that's not just Jamie Kennedy doing his... Or uh, not Jamie Kennedy. It's uh, Christopher Maloney from Harold and Kumar <laughs> reprising his role. <laughs> it's, this guy. Th- this is a character out of a Stephen King novel. Like, this guy shows up for one scene. I don't even think it's that. I think this is a parody of a guy from a Stephen King novel. Yeah. What the fuck is with this guy? I don't know. This scene is pointless, and I love it so much. Do you think that's who he was 
drinking with on set. <laughs> I was just going to ask, is, is this a real scene or did they, were they just happen to be filming? <laughs> I have no idea, but I think Donald Pleasance is so charming in this scene. His mm-hmm. little smile when the preacher starts singing is really God. great. That made me happy. I was like, oh. This, the bumper stickers in this guy's car, uh-huh. which I guess ten, it's not even bumper stickers, I guess. His license plate says amen. Yeah. He, well, he's got one that says, I love Jesus, which is very generic, but then I believe the Bible. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Okay, dude. You, you guys just—they went to a Christian store and just bought every sticker they could find and like just throw it in there. Who cares? It's so good. The only thing missing is a fucking sticker that says like "Priest Lives Matter" or some <laughs> bullshit like that. Oh, it's an American flag, but it's got like a cross, like yeah. painted into it, and a photo of Kirk Cameron under the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kirk Cameron's silhouette, but it's like the Punisher logo. Just so you. <laughs> oh my god! I love the way Loomis says Haddonfield. He's like. Haddonfield. Mm-hmm. He's here in Haddonfield. But this is not... We, we missed the scene, though. We missed the scene, though, where Loomis gets fucking punked by these kids. Oh, yeah. Oh, Holy shit. Jesus. <laughs> gets a mouthful of dirt. Come on, old man. Come on, old man. <laughs> oh, it's so good. We need two oil boys to join us for the bikini competition. <laughs> <laughs> You're in luck. There's a town just three <laughs> miles that way. <laughs> So That's good. all I could think of was it's Harry so and good. Lloyd yep, chasing so good. Michael Myers. <laughs> yep. So good. Do you realize what you've done? <laughs> what is so? What is Michael's mask? I think we well, we've never done the original, but mm. I think we've talked about this before. What is Michael's mask supposed to be? Oh, sure. Because in that first movie, he gets it in a hardware store. Yeah. In this one, it's just like a convenience store. But all the other masks seem to be for something, like a creature mm-hmm. or Dracula or something like that. But what is uh, is it, are they selling it as a Michael Myers mask in this store? That's, that's a great question. I, I I don't know, and I I but you know what? It was surprising me is how vast the selection is at the oh, convenience yeah. store. Yeah. yeah, I love that fucking neon Frankenstein suit. <laughs> Good choices, <laughs> including a mask of uh the Silver Shamrock guy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, besides Daniel Harris, I think the best part of this movie to me is. How they treat uh, Sheriff Brackett 2.0 here? Oh, big maker! maker. Yeah. You could have you could have played this exactly the same way, where it's just this raving lunatic that comes into your police station, yeah, and you just ignore him until it gets out of control. But I do like that the sheriff. I mean, he gives him a little bit of shit at the beginning until he gets evidence right away, mm-hmm. and we we skip that whole rigmarole. Oh, of I don't believe the you. And yeah. God, yes, I do like that a lot. I love the thing that I love in this scene is he shows up and like. It's sort of like the guard at the beginning of the movie, but here Loomis gives us the the tag, like a couple of taglines. He's like, uh, 10 years ago, he tried to kill Laurie Strode. Now he wants her daughter. Mm-hmm. Death has come to your town. Like, he has a couple of different, just like little- He, he gets out his index card. He's like, hold on, let me go back through the-, the-, <laughs> uh, the evil on two, This is evil on two legs. Uh, uh, bl- black eyes, like a doll's eyes. He's <laughs> trying a few different lines, and the director's like, oh, this is all good. Yeah, I saw a filling station in flames. Yeah, six yeah. bodies, Sheriff. I uh, shot him six times. Yeah, he's hold on. I got these out of order. Let me reshuffle them. He <laughs> shuffles them like a deck of cards. <laughs> I do like the new sheriff a lot. I think he's a good addition. Yeah, he's yeah. great. He's great, and he becomes kind of useless in this in Halloween yeah. Five. It's yeah. a bummer. Again, doing people dirty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So let's talk about the part that we all kind of. Well, I don't know. I, I mean, this is we we were talking about it with Halloween. Uh, kills that we wanted uh, uh, the evil dies tonight mob yeah when we but, when we smash cut to the bar from silver bullet yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep uh just watch that this weekend by the way it it's great right uh Great's not the word I would use. But well, it's very fun. It's there very fun. There you go. <laughs> Dustin was like, I've been watching a lot of werewolf movies recently. I was like, oh, well, let's watch this one. I know you have it on here because yeah. yeah. I've watched it twice. And you made him watch it for the first time. And he pointed out something I didn't know. Uh, mm-hmm. Coors must have sponsored that entire film. Yeah. No no kidding, right? It's like how you know Starbucks, There's a, they say there's a Starbucks cup in every frame of Fight Club. I think uh-huh. it's the same with Silver Bullet with Coors. <laughs> <laughs> but I, didn't, I don't remember ever seeing anybody actually drinking the Coors. It was nope. just neon signs everywhere. So there's there's literally three Coors neon signs in one shot. The geography of that town is amazing. I think I think you guys mean Coors. 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 Yep. Coors. Yep. Little, little Coors light. No, Earl, Earl is full of wisdom. He, as the posse is getting together, he announces police the uh, phone never just rings at a police station yep. no way no how that's all it takes to right. start a mob that's all i need here's the part that i like about this though because when they when they get in the car and they they're flagging down mm. 
and they just start shooting at a bush, <laughs> yeah. right? And then I would have it's Ben Tramer. I, I was, <laughs> I was just gonna uh, say I would love. Oh, I would love it. I wanted so hard for them one of them to be like, "Oh, you shot Ben Tramer's other brother." <laughs> <laughs> I think you made that same joke in Halloween I know. and Halloween. I, know. I did. I want it all to be connected. I want there to be like besides the the serial killing that Michael's doing. That yeah. Somehow Ben Tramer and his it's like they're like the Kennedys. They just for whatever reason mm-hmm. just constantly getting taken down. <laughs> if one of the Tramers doesn't come back and ends, I'm gonna be so upset. No. Okay, no right? We we have we have skipped over uh, one of the wildest uh, wardrobe decisions in in a motion picture, oh? which is the the big shirt that says "Cops Do It" by the book. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> great, great shirt. I mean, it clearly looks like it's just iron on letters, it but is. great, yeah. yeah, great shirt. Yeah, I mean, that, I, we talked about this, Mally and I, with the American Werewolf in London. There is nothing better than a woman in an oversized shirt. Can we all agree? Yes, it's really agree? nice. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Pretty good. Yeah, it's great. No, at, at, this was a very important outfit for young Nathan watching this movie. <laughs> I, I could see why this in the fireplace scene. Yeah. Oh, yeah. young Nathan. That's my rap name. <laughs> <Little> young, <laughs> young Nathan. <laughs> young Gravy was already taken. <laughs> <laughs> hey, little Stay Puff on the track. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the first mention of MTV in this franchise? And maybe only? It's gotta be. Right? Yeah. Because I can't think of it, that or any other slasher maybe other than maybe like Scream where they've mentioned MTV before. I, uh-huh. It was kind of jarring because I mean I know it's the 80s and like the late 80s. And- Wish we could just watch some MTV. Yeah. Don't we all? <laughs> uh, Michael's killed another dog for no reason. Yeah. Poor Sunday. Recipe Sunday. He's a cat guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. And uh, <laughs> around here, we meet uh, a character that I am obsessed with, uh, Bucky, the electrician. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Man's just God. trying to do his job. <laughs> the guy who immediately just starts talking shit to Michael Myers gets grabbed by the dick, thrown into a transformer. He's wearing a hard hat with his own name on it. <laughs> That's how he knows it's his. Makes it easier for the coroner to find the body and identify <laughs> There is a Twitter account for this character. What? what? <laughs> Hold on. Uh, Hold on. Let me find what? it. <laughs> Pull Wait, up the Googles. On. Hold on. He got grabbed by the dick warlock. <laughs> it's at Power Plant Bucky on Twitter. Oh, no fucking way. Yeah. Power Plant Bucky. <laughs> the fucking time so good don't try that Halloween shit with me <laughs> this is this is fantastic back in the like in the late 90s there was like a GeoCities account that was like a fan page for Bucky I remember listening to someone talking about it on the Halloweenies podcast it's so uh, funny Mally, Mally get get a little of this uh, don't try that Halloween <laughs> shit with me <laughs> Ordered this customized hard hat for Amazon Prime Day. Oh my god. <laughs> I need it. Uh, he tried to jump me from behind like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> god bless whoever this guy is. You know what? I'm gonna shout them out in the episode just so, just so they can get know. <laughs> oh, it's so good. At Power Plant Bucky. Most underrated character in horror scene. I love, I love when people make Twitter accounts for this, this kind of shit. It's oh, so good. It's so funny. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, literally my, Michael... Michael kind of goes to town, leaves town to kill a guy, and then come back. <laughs> this dude's death, like, shuts down the city. Yeah. I mean, say what you will. This is a smart Michael. Yeah. He's knocking out power lines, knocking out fucking telephone lines. Nope. Hey, you know what? You know what? A little scampy. But what if that was completely by accident? You shut the fuck up, JT. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. He's like, man, I, got, I need to get to the power plant or the power station so I can shut everything down and be dark. That's my thing. And he's like, on his way there, he's like, I have no idea how to shut the power off. What, I'm just going to start flipping switches. <laughs> he's barely like, I know how to drive. <laughs> Maybe he was asking Bucky for help. <laughs> <laughs> and then he and then he finds Bucky and he's like, okay, well, I got to kill this guy. And then it just. <laughs> he's seen my face. I can't let him live. <laughs> <laughs> Th- this fake out with the multiple Michaels is pretty good. This is definitely happening in Halloween Ends, right? Yeah. Yeah, probably. I tell you one thing I I definitely need in this movie. Uh-huh. I need to see this police station massacre scene. Mm-hmm. Yes, please. I got to see it. I need to see it. It's got to, I want, I mean, I got it with Malignant, but I want to <laughs> see it with Michael. <laughs> oh Fuck, my God. Where's that crossover? Do Michael versus Gabriel? Michael throwing a chair through the air. <laughs> <laughs> Still the best scene in that movie. Oh I love God, that movie. It's so good. I love it so much. I'm glad Nathan finally fucking saw I, it. It's so good. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to put words in one's mouth, but I did see, I can't remember who it was, but there was a Twitter critic that I was reading mm-hmm. and he said, this year's malignant, and the, like the, the way malignant was received, 
He's thinking that movie Barbarian with Bill Skarsgård is going to be the same way. Oh, so, hell yeah. Not to make no promises, but I'm, now I'm suddenly interested in that movie. That makes me very excited. So anyway, did anyone else see Orphan First Kill? No. Uh, not not a malignant. Not at all. But no, but it was kind of billed as like the next big like camp horror. It, it's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty good. I'll give it that. Okay. It, it's not great, but it's it's a good time. Okay. So Halloween four, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we we cut back to the fireplace. Kelly's all over Brady's bunch. <laughs> <laughs> you were waiting to say that. You were fucking you had waiting. That one fucking that. loaded. You had that Nathan. fucking l- just ready to go. <laughs> Fellas, I don't I don't just take notes. I write down zingers. <laughs> Is that a cheer or a boo? I don't understand. What, I don't know. I, it, can Let's we do, do both. both at the same yeah, time? Can you hit him with both? <laughs> <laughs> and now hit me with the William Forsyth. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Oh my god, uh, that was a good one. Though. I'll give you that one, <laughs> dude. Wait, what does Rachel call that? Oh, Miss Hot Pants yeah. over there. What the fuck does she call? She's her? got no pants on. She stuffs her bra into the couch, and I kept thinking about the room, like when the guy goes back to get his uh, me underwear. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. No, yeah, you're right though, Mally. She does call her little Miss Hot Pants. I'm like, she doesn't have any pants on. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else you could have called her. Right. Like, yeah. Dustin, that's the joke. I know, dude. I, I know, I know. You fucking idiot. But is there there's not any nudity in this movie, right? No, is there, almost. Is Halloween like the, the least nude heavy of all the uh, maybe nightmare? Uh I think after well, two and five, I think, has a has a good amount. Like, two has one. I, but Friday the thirteenth is definitely the sleazier definitely. of the of the top three. And then Rob Zombie got a hold of it and then it shot its numbers back up. That's yeah. true. That's true. Yeah. So the, a couple of firsts in this movie too is this. This is technically Michael's first gun death, mm-hmm. right? Sure. Technically. Oh, I I love this kill. I think it's kind of funny. I mean, this is him at his most scamp, right? Like, yeah, where he's just <laughs> sitting in the rocking chair. He's he's basically like, better not come on my fucking property. Like, yeah. In the rocking. <laughs> it's chair. good to own land. <laughs> <laughs> I like how I also like how Meeker's house. The second the lights go out, is lit like a gothic mansion. Yes. <laughs> yep. And and the fact that like everyone is so spread out, like the second the lights go off, all right, we're all together. Yeah. Like, we're, we we're all got buddies. We're all hanging out together. But nope, everyone's split up. L- yeah. <laughs> I love this little this conversation where Brady's like, "What's going on?" And Rachel's like, "Michael Myers is Jamie's uncle," and he's like. And he, I gotta, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I'm fucking out. Loomis steps outside. He's like, "State, the police don't know what to do. They're fucking stupid." Yeah, I mean, he's not wrong. No, he's not wrong. <laughs> this, do you think this continues down the path that we talked about with Halloween Kills? Of like, Lori was clearly delusional that right. Michael was after her. Yes, if we, well, I mean, the problem is this exists in a, a world where Halloween Two is canon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But then they make a good point of Michael's been locked away the enti- her entire life. Yeah. How does he even know what Jamie looks like? Sure. Doesn't he find like the Polaroids or something like that? Yeah. Of Lori? I can't I can't remember. He does. Yeah, they go he goes through her photos. How lucky is yeah. that, by the way? <laughs> right. That the, they were all just left strewn about. He goes into the one house that has the one thing that he needs to know. Oh, this is the girl I gotta kill. That's true. He knows where the house is. Yeah. I, <laughs> That's very weird. Don't know. We needed the scene we needed the scene of him putting on like a hat and going into the adoption agency and pretending <laughs> to be a friend of the family. Oh my god! Uh, like Michael needs a scrapbook. Yes. Like, memories. Yeah, well, I mean, in Child's Play too, Chucky called the adoption agency yeah. to act like his uncle. Yeah. That's right. I'm looking for Andy. <laughs> <laughs> but in I'm this case, for Jamie. <laughs> in this case, he's actually her uncle. Yeah. So I'd be like, oh shit, yeah, Jamie. We're friends till the end. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, I, we get. The gun kill, which is great. Yeah. Then I guess they're waiting for backup police to come in, and we we go to the school for some reason. I can't remember. Oh yes. So Rachel, Rachel call. They call the state police, and there's this really kind of endearing bit where Rachel is very proud of herself for using radio lingo, yes. which I thought was kind of yes. cute. Yep. Um. And then yeah, Brady gets like his windpipe crushed yep and we get that whole sequence on the roof that i think is pretty great oh i love the roof sequence dude the the thing about the the michael fake out earlier with the kids dress up as him is yeah i think michael's got a stunt double because he gets down from that roof so fucking fast (laughs) super fast so fast 
<laughs> Which is funny because when we see her like just kind of throwing stuff down the stairs, he, him trying to get through shit is funny. Like yeah. he's he's literally he's like pushing a chair out of the way. And, <laughs> but yeah, like this this rooftop scene, I always remember really well. And I, well I think done. in the original screenplay, like the house was on fire, and they were like, "We do not have the budget for this." Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, it was. We spent it all at the gas station. We don't have the budget <laughs> right. for this. Can I a little spoiler for Orphan Kills? House uh-huh. on fire, roof chase. Woo! Just so just so you know, yeah. <laughs> This is the next one, Orphan Ends. <laughs> Little Orphan oh. Indy. Little Orphans Die Tonight. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Did we get, we get Blonde Michael? Blonde Michael, yeah. I feel like it would be if you were playing Mortal Kombat, it, you'd get the alternate costumes, you'd get Blonde Michael. Right. Oh, that right? would be amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah, because Rachel, Rachel gets knocked out after she falls off the roof. We get that scene that, like guts me where, where Jamie says, please come alive, Rachel. Ugh. And... Loomis grabs her out of the darkness and goes, where's the schoolhouse? <laughs> Wait, also, so this, isn't there a scene somewhere where Jamie's just walking through the streets crying? Yes. And Loomis yeah. grabs her. Yeah. She's like scared. Yeah. That broke my heart. Yeah. yeah. Again, giving props to Danielle Harris. So good. And Loomis is like, we'll be safe in the schoolhouse. So he shoots the lock and sets <laughs> off the alarm, <laughs> makes the most noise on the planet. That's the plan, right? Set off. Yes. Because they're not at the house anymore where the police are coming. Right. So they go to the school and set off the alarm, which I guess makes sense. But I do like this bit where she's like, we'll be safe soon, right? And he's like, yeah. Like he laughs. laughs. Well, he also knows there's an angry mob out there. Yeah. Right. That's just running the street. So, speaking of Angry Mob, they show up, they put Loomis in, and Rachel and Jamie in the car. Well, not Loomis, right? Loomis does Yeah, Loomis gets thrown through a window and just sits out the next 10 minutes of the yes. movie. And so, they get they, all the hillbillies and, and uh, Jamie and Rachel get in the car, mm-hmm. and they're leaving town. And Michael, who I, I feel like, you know that shot in the Two Towers of Legolas just throwing himself onto Gimli's horse? Sure. Same concept here with Michael coming out from underneath this truck. Yeah. <laughs> He's been there the whole time. I, do, I don't understand. And then no one hears it. How does no one hear He's it? stabbing a guy who's screaming and the dude next to him is standing like a fucking J.C. Penny mannequin. Yes! Like, it is, <laughs> it is <laughs> weird. This entire scene is metal as fuck. I don't even want to hear any kind of complaints about it. It's so fucking hard. Hardcore. It's cool. It makes no sense. Oh, no. This is rad, but this is also... This is the most T-1000 shit in the movie. Yes. <laughs> like, my, Michael doesn't... I mean, the, the driver doesn't hear any commotion. No. Doesn't feel the weight of the vehicle shift at all. <laughs> well, no, because he's thinking about what he's going to say to Ted Hollister's dad tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Ted. Ted, I'm sorry. Look, he was playing in the bushes. The boy looked like Michael Myers to me. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. That bush looked an awful lot like Michael Myers. <laughs> <laughs> so, Michael's, I guess let's let's recap the ending here. Sure. So, Michael's on top of this truck. He mm-hmm. rips this guy's jaw. Again, m- this place well into your Terminator theory, this metal fingers he's got or something. Yeah. Kills the driver. Rachel pushes him out the fucking truck. <laughs> so, Rachel, she can take the wheel. Yep. Rachel crashes. Jamie and her uh, get out, and Michael's there. The cavalry finally shows up. They turn around. Like, the troopers turned around for some reason. Yes. Uh, And Michael gets unloaded on, kind (laughs) of like how Jason does at the beginning of Jason Goes to Hell. Just (laughs) sure blammo. And it's funny, too, because the guy... Who's the guy playing Michael? Is it... uh, George P. Wilbur? Not not great at pretending to be shot. Um, No. Not at all. (laughs) No, he looks... You know what it looks like? You know in the first Mortal Kombat when you did Johnny Cage's nut punch move? (laughs) Yeah. That's what it looks like. He's like, ooh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. My stomach. (laughs) (laughs) So he he falls... (laughs) He falls down a well. Yeah, in a well. And they're like, no possible way he can come back from that one. Right. We've we've learned nothing. Which I love in the recap in the next movie, yeah. they throw dynamite down there. <laughs> <laughs> so they go they go back to, to Jamie's house. Mm-hmm. Or I guess Ra- yeah, Jamie and Rachel's house. Jamie puts on her Halloween costume, which we should have mentioned, looks like the exact costume that Michael wore when he was a kid and murdered his sister. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which she sees a vision of for some reason. Yes. Yes. She sees it when she tries it on for some reason. But she, much like the first movie, puts on uh, the, the Halloween mask. We see it from the POV. Mm-hmm. And she kills her adopt. I don't understand this relation. It's her adoptive mom? Fo- yeah. Foster. foster parents. Foster, foster, foster yeah. parents. Okay. Got it. Okay. And then the, again, five retcons Undoes that it. and is like, oh, she actually is okay. Yeah. yeah. Really dropped. Uh, Halloween five drops the ball at this fucking ending so hard and loomis <laughs> I, 
I, there's, is prepared to kill her. Yeah. He does what he fucking should. Loomis takes about mm, 0.4 seconds <laughs> yeah. before making the decision that he's going to blast this little girl. <laughs> I spent all this time protecting her, not fucking. Rightfully fucking so. What's, what's a better Donald Pleasant screaming no, this <laughs> or the end of the producer's ending of uh, Halloween 6? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> no, this this ending rules. It's this is so fucking rock fucking and roll. Good. It's good. It's a good ending. But what I don't understand is what there was no real foreshadowing for this. No. There's nothing. Not really, no. I just need something. Like there's a weird moment when he's laying there after they've hit him with the truck where he like she grabs his hand. Is that it? Is that why she becomes evil? Because she touches him? The, the, I, I don't know. I it seems like they were trying to set up that his, like, spirit went into her or something. Essence. But if that's the case, Loomis, shouldn't Loomis be the same? Sure. Well, he does try to murder a four-year-old. I guess yeah. that's true. It's, it gets a little <laughs> bit slower in his old age. <laughs> I thought it was just all, like, the blood, like, they're all related and stuff like that. I oh, just evil runs in the family? I guess. I don't know. But is it like twins or it skips a generation? Because Lori didn't have that. There was, a, there was an interview with Danielle Harris around that time where she was, she thought that maybe she was gonna be like michael's sidekick in the next Ugh. movie because no one really properly explained it to her either Ugh. yeah i just I, I it's a good ending but something to set it up would be nice mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> well it's funny because even with this ending one of the rules going into five was that jamie cannot be evil it's so silly like that was a hard rule weird then don't do this ending this yeah. ending is i don't know it's it's just like there's two different friday the 13th movies that end with tommy jarvis being the new killer and then they're ignored in the next one. Yeah. I just don't like that as a trope. Sure, I agree. I, I don't. Unless you're doing unless you're doing something uh supernatural or something. And if that's the case, this is not the franchise to do that in. Oh, I have terrible news for you. I, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> What Did so anybody check Jamie for wrist tattoos? I was just about to say, <laughs> in the special edition re-releases of this or whatever, somebody's got to drop in a, 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 a tattoo on her wrist or something. And a bantha at the gas station. <laughs> Why not? That explodes. Oh, Michael! there's a deleted scene. Michael's in the back to tank. That's how he's able to recover from all these gunshot wounds. <laughs> sure. That makes sense. So, yeah, uh, pretty rock and roll ending. I just wish it made any... It, I mean, it makes more sense than the Hellraiser ending. I'll tell you that for sure. Sure. <laughs> But yeah, Jamie is, uh, I mean, it's a pretty good shot. Her with the clown mask, the scissors covered in blood. Smash to black. It's pretty, pretty dope. Yeah. Pretty great. Pretty great. All right. Well, is there anything else, any other notes uh, before we get into uh, the wrap up stuff here? Nah. No. No, I don't think so. All right. Well, let's, let's jump over to Prop Cup. And since he, uh, he's now at least somewhat familiar with at least one of these movies, uh, JT. <laughs> Do you have a? Pro I know you might not because I think you said earlier you might not have one. But do you have a prop cop for Halloween four? Uh, I think I'm gonna go with the Abe Lincoln picture that's <laughs> weirdly framed in the gas station. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that's great. Okay, yeah, this is not what Lincoln had in mind. I think when he uh, when he when he was president, he was like, I'm, one day I'm gonna be <laughs> in a photo on a wall in a diner. <laughs> I'm gonna be in a horror movie. Um, Nathan, what about you? Uh, I want Bucky's hard hat oh. that says Bucky on it. Yeah, God that's a good damn one. it! Was that yours, Mally? Yes, Mally, you can have it. I'll I'll take the uh, I'll take the neon Frankenstein mask. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Well, mine is actually from the bar. Oh, and I don't know if you guys saw this, but what is the head uh, redneck guy? Earl. Earl. Behind Earl's shoulder. There's this really great uh, inflatable <laughs> oh my God. dog lantern <laughs> with sunglasses on. That's just that's uh, cool as hell. Yeah, I it struck out to me so hard that I, there's no way I couldn't pick it. That's great. That's amazing. He yeah. dressed it up too. <laughs> uh, that dog parties. I wish I could see. It looks like it's a Budweiser yeah. T-shirt, but I can't tell for sure. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I, that would light up my room. I think I could use that. <laughs> All right, guys. I this is I got plethora of options here. Uh, what about a bit part? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if for, for new listeners, this is, of course, where we look at all the different extras in the movie mm -hmm. and we recast them with one of our one of ourselves here. Um, I I almost want to say no one can pick Bucky because he's named. <laughs> but if you picked him, I'll, I'll let you have it. So, uh, Mally, how about we start with you? Who's your bit part? Uh, I want to be one of the cheerleaders in the car that leaves Loomis in the dust. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. All right, Nathan? Um, I, damn, I had picked Bucky, but I kind of want to be the security guard. Damn nice. it, at the beginning? From the damn beginning. <laughs> the one that's got all the trailer lines. <laughs> all right. Um, 
JT, you got an idea for a bit part? I want to be the preacher who picks Loomis up yes. after Mally leaves him in the dust. Oh, my God. All right. Now I've been chasing him across four states. Well, I guess I'll uh, I'll take um, the guy that gets the thumb through the forehead. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever reason, that kills me, but okay. All right. So, I guess it's time, gentlemen, mm-hmm. for the silver linings of Halloween 4, colon, the return of Michael Myers. Who would like to go first? Oh, I got mine locked and loaded. Oh. Rachel gets out of that horrible relationship with that piece of shit, Brady. Hey, absolutely. <laughs> Fuck you, Brady. Yeah. All right, Nathan? Yeah, uh, people will hopefully listen to Loomis next time. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Probably not. <laughs> JT? Demonstrably, no. <laughs> I don't know, man. Preacher is still probably drinking. <laughs> Drinking and driving. Yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> He's probably having a good time somewhere. Drinking and driving his way. He never even saw the horrors of what happened. That's right. <laughs> so I'm going to go with what the movie is telling me is the obvious thing, which is Michael is done for as far as they know. Yeah, and he's in hell. <laughs> there's like six people in the house here at the end with Jamie. I think the numbers are in their favor that they can absolutely demolish a six-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's my silver lining. This is a closed, open and closed case. Six adults and a gun. <laughs> that's good. All right. Well- Fellas, how about this? If you're watching Halloween 4 out there mm. and you get to that ending and as shocking as it is, it is kind of a downer. Jamie, no, the the, the youth is corrupted. So uh, maybe you want to put on another movie right after to uh, balance things out, uh, bring your mood back up. So that's what we like to call here the double feature, the pick me up movie alternative. Mm-hmm. I'll go ahead and go first uh, because it's another movie with uh, return in the title. And Michael Myers is sort of a king of sorts. Oh, boy. So, I'm going to say, go ahead, put on Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King yeah. ah, okay, afterwards. Okay. Uh, JT, you got one in mind? Well, with a cliffhanger like that. Uh, cliffhanger? <laughs> <laughs> <Not cliffhanger. laughs> Shit, I was going to say Halloween 5, but... Uh, okay. Yeah, no, go ahead and watch Halloween 5. All right. It's just as bad. <laughs> well. <laughs> okay. Mally, was that yours? Um, no. Since we all agree that, I mean, Carmen... Philippi has the best character in this movie, right? <laughs> the fucking reverend. Yeah. <laughs> Why not go with a movie where he plays yet another fantastic character and just throw on Wayne's World? Yes. yes. Great yes. choice. Wasn't he also in uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure? I and The Wedding so. Singer. Yeah. And Charlie's yes, Angels. Yes. He played. Does he play a drunken Pee Wee's Big Adventure? He plays a hobo on a train. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've also been on a big Alice Cooper kick, so. That inspired this choice as well. Sure. Can we have the headcanon that that's the same guy from <laughs> Halloween 4 and yes. Pee-wee's Big Adventure? Absolutely. <laughs> it 100% is. All right, Nathan, what about you? Um, I was inspired by uh, one of Michael's alternative outfits in this movie. <laughs> I think you should follow this one up with Legally Blonde. Yes, nice. I do it. I fucking do it. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> that's great. That is great. Okay. Well, um, Halloween 4, uh, do we recommend it? Yeah, 100%. Yes. I think so. I think it's a blast. It's got a couple of slow bits, but it's really fun. Yeah. Like, as much as I dislike the brother and sister mm-hmm. storyline, I like where this, I like this. Yeah. It did the best of what they already set up for that. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Uh, what I like about this movie is where a lot of it's spent outside. I want to mean, like, they never did a whole trick-or-treating scene yeah. in the other ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second, yeah, it, the Second one was all in the hospital. Mm-hmm. This was outside, got you into Haddonfield, and I really, really like that. This one looks like fall, yeah. yeah, and I fucking love it. Like I love, I love the OG Halloween, but it's so clearly California. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they like, and I mean, this one is fucking what Utah or something like mm-hmm. that. But goddamn, it looks like fall in this movie, and I'm fucking here for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I think it's far, far from the worst of these movies, like, yeah. by far. Like I said earlier, I think it's in the top half, for sure. Mm-hmm. It is nice to see Michael return, even if it's completely implausible <laughs> how it happens. It's, it's no resurrection, guys. <laughs> but. And Daniel Harris just introducing, we yeah. should have mentioned, introducing Daniel oh, Harris. Oh, yeah, for sure. Crushes it. I mean... There's some great child performances in movies, but in horror movies, it's really hard to get right. Mm -hmm. I think she is – she's almost better than almost everyone else in the cast. Like, almost better than Donald Pleasant. She's great. Yeah. If we're being honest. And 
Yeah. I, 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 the more we talk about five, the more I remember it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I can't believe that's what she's excellent in five too. Yeah. Like there's a sequence where she's trying to get away from Michael and she's in like a laundry shoot. That is one of the scariest set pieces in any of the Halloween movies. Yep. As bad as that movie is, that sequence is fucking awesome. Yeah. I, I, I don't love her in Rob Zombie's movie. Sure. No. Dude, I, I feel so bad for Annie in the second one. Yeah. Like, yeah. After all that, to still go out. It's... The writing is against every actor <laughs> yeah. in those movies, though. Like, I, I'm i I'm a huge Malcolm McDowell fan, and he can't make Loomis's arc in H2 work. No. <laughs> nope. And I will say, Danielle Harris, she talks a lot of trash on the current franchise yeah, because sure. they refuse to bring her back. Yeah. Even though it wouldn't make sense to do so. You Not know? at all. Yeah. I just want to see her in a bit part or something. Yeah. Just something... Very small. It w- I don't. It would take me out of it. Maybe. Maybe. Do you think? I mean, we all we all say we'd recommend this movie. Would we recommend the unmade versions of this movie? Oh, That's a good point. Buddy. Let's get into it. Uh, yeah, I want to hear about this. Yep. Mally, take us away. Okay. So as Nathan mentioned earlier, we're gonna start with the Etchison draft. Yeah. And I got the taglines ready for him. Oh. Try as you might, you can't ban the boogeyman. <laughs> can, can we can we play a guessing game where we try and guess what the title of these movies are? Uh, none of these really have titles. Ah, okay. Just it, just Halloween Four. Yeah. Dang, I was hoping to do the opposite. You tell us the plot, and then we put a title to it. <laughs> okay, I, like, I that. like this. Let's do that. I like this idea. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna start with the Etchison draft. So uh-huh. it. All three of these pretty much take place 10 years after Halloween 2. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, Halloween is banned in Haddonfield. Okay. Smart move. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> S- smart move. Which, dude, they the whole banning Halloween is a big thing in all of the unmade sequels. That's interesting. Okay. So, again, as with a lot of the unmade sequels, Tommy and Lindsay are the main characters. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's like Tommy, Lindsay, and this reporter named Mundy. <laughs> and he's in town covering all the controversy because a local drive-in theater is doing a Halloween movie marathon. And the townsfolk of Haddonfield are pissed because of the Halloween ban. They're sure. like, no, like, we banned everything. You can't be doing this. Nah. So they kind of brought this back for Halloween 6. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. So Mundy goes to Smith's Grove mm-hmm. and talks to a bunch of patients. And he learns that... A lot of the patients thought Michael was a god, and they called him the Lord of the Dead. Okay, now we're we're veering into trouble. Yes, <laughs> yeah. And so there's no explanation for how Michael comes back. He just fucking shows back up. Yeah. Okay. Like, he just shows up at a pumpkin patch and murders someone. There's no explanation yeah. for where the fuck he came from. Okay. Um, it's implied that he is a ghost. Huh. It's implied. Mm. A, a ghost or a spirit? Yes. Like, I feel like those are different. If I, it, this one kind of worked on, like, Candyman rules, right? Uh, like, pretty much. People yep. believed in him so much pretty that much. he, yeah. Okay. So, the big third act set piece <laughs> happens. Literally big. Yes, at the drive-in, where Michael just goes car to car. And just murders everyone. I, I kind of like that. Uh, yeah. it's, well, hold on. Hold <laughs> on. Yeah, I, I take this it is the one I'm the most familiar with. So, and it should be noted, the shape can regenerate in this for some reason. Like, oh, at one point, no. he, like, loses two fingers and, like, half of his head, and he it just grows back. Well, if that Halloween's End trailer is to be believed, uh, something about fingers going missing, too. <laughs> Doesn't he also split into a bunch of shapes Not at one point? That's, you're thinking of one of the un... Oh, okay, one of the other ones, okay. For Halloween 5. That's, okay, um, gotcha. So the cops show up, and just shoot the living fuck out of this dude. Yeah. Okay. For some reason, that does not work. It actually makes him stronger, and he grows to 12 feet tall. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he absorbs the bullets. <laughs> okay. I will pause there and just let you guys go on that one. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> just really think about it. Yeah. 12 feet tall. He becomes a Hulk. He becomes a Hulk. Can I tell you the way that that, that make that work? The movie they're playing at the drive-in theater. I know you said it's a, ho- it's a Halloween fest, but- Scrap that idea. It's just a drive-in theater, and they're playing big. <laughs> oh, no. Do you know what movie is written into the script? Oh, no. That is playing when Michael attacks? The um, thing? Friday the 13th. Oh, uh, well, that'd be kind of funny, I guess, because it's make- that the whole franchise is a ripoff of this one. Sure. <laughs> like, literally, in the script, it's like, Jason Voorhees appears on the screen, but a shadow overwhelms the screen, and it's the shape. Yeah. It's garbage. Um, also, I don't know how they were going to get around those rights issues, but whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they, the cops end up shooting a gas tank and just everything explodes. Okay. 
balls to the wall explosion. Uh, Michael disappears. Tommy and Lindsay live happily ever after they leave Haddonfield. And isn't there like a weird scene at the end where they wake up and Lindsay's like, Lindsay like has a dream about the shape or something like that? Like maybe I don't remember. Um, so no mention of Lori, right? Nope. Yeah. It should be noted. This script was okayed by John Carpenter. Of yeah. course. <laughs> yeah, he dug it. He doesn't care. He doesn't give <laughs> yeah. a shit. That was before he sold his 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 stake in the in this franchise, too. Yeah, he still had a stake in the franchise. He was in. Mm. He was like, 12 foot tall Michael, sign me the fuck up. <laughs> <sighs> that sounds really good, yeah, man. Real. <laughs> I got a title. Is there any other details? Uh, no, that's pretty much it for that one. All right, well, what about you, Nathan? You got a title for this one? Uh, Halloween 4, Lord of the Dead. Yeah, that seemed like the obvious one. JT, you got one? Halloween 4, Mega Michael. Mega, <laughs> Mega Michael. I like the it. Am, the embiggening of Michael Myers. <laughs> Mega Michael. Well, because you, you mentioned the pumpkin patch, I'm going to say it's the great pumpkin, Michael Myers. <laughs> 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 this, is, this is like really close to uh, a segment on, oh, that's a scary movie, where we oh, try yeah? to uh, retitle <laughs> the movies. Yeah. All right. Well, how, many, how many other scripts are there? Um, well, there's two more. Okay. The next it's one. not a two more. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. I got, I got her. (laughs) I'm back, baby. All right. So this is the Bitterman draft. This is probably the closest to the theatrical one we got. Okay. Uh, Tagline, just when you thought it was safe to go trick or treating. Oh, no. We're ripping off Jaws now. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So again, 10 years later. Of course. uh, Michael in a medical facility in a coma, wakes up, escapes. Mm -hmm. Ape escape. He's picked up by a priest, Mm -hmm. kills him and his dog, steals his clothes and his truck. So Michael is dressed like a priest this entire movie. Fucking fucking slaps. I'm in. Fucking awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's got the dog's head on his face. (laughs) (laughs) So Lori has died in a car car crash Uh uh-huh she has a daughter named amanda who has nightmares of michael Mm. the difference is she basically is like you know what the boogeyman gets a bad rap he seems like an okay guy what is she basing this on (laughs) i don't know so in this one like pretty much the niece is like trying to become friends with michael the whole like at one point he's chasing like frankenstein style he's chasing her through the myers house and she thinks it's a game of hide and seek. Oh, oh well, this kid's stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I hope this kid dies. <laughs> it's fucking wild. Yes. So she goes to the Myers house and explores. Her foster sister, um, Linda, comes after her. Uh, Michael attacks. Um, Amanda finds Michael's old clown costume and puts it on. Uh, Linda grabs her and they escape. Mm. Loomis and Brackett. Yes, Brackett is back. I'm in. Find them. And Brackett's like, oh, I have an old cabin in the woods. Let's hide them at, let, we're going to hide them there. I'll tell all my cop buds. Yeah, don't let them read that book by the fireplace. <laughs> don't play that <laughs> tape recorder. <laughs> it should be noted, Amanda does not trust Loomis because, again, she thinks her uncle is a good guy. Mm-hmm. Um, Michael overhears the plan on one of, on a cop CB radio. and was like, oh, convenient. <laughs> and g- so just uh, somehow knows where the cabin is and follows him there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Michael breaks in, almost kills Linda, and that's when Amanda realizes, like, oh, my uncle's not a nice guy. Hey, d- you stabbed her. Ah, that's not what nice people do. So Michael, like, almost kills Linda. He grabs Amanda and tries to, like, shoves a brush in her hand and is, like, miming her, like, hey, you know, do the Judith do thing. The- oh, no. Ooh. Yeah. And she's like, what the fuck? Are- what are you on about? Um, Linda gets up and it was like, oh, okay, hang on. I'm going to distract him. Mm-hmm. And she starts brushing her hair and was like, hey, Michael, I'm Judith. And like starts taking off her top. And Michael's like, oh, shit, <laughs> what's going on over here? What the fuck? <laughs> She's doing the Judith. Cool. This was meant to launch a dance craze called Do the Judith. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> um, so but Do the Bart man ended up winning out. <laughs> so Michael walks towards her as she's like unbuttoning her blouse and then she just stabs him in the fucking throat. Shit. Yeah. Okay. Linda shows the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Loomis enters and just shoots the fuck fuck out of michael and and saves them both so strange that they had a character named linda in this movie also yeah right, I know, right? 
So they put Michael's body in an ambulance and Amanda sneaks away and takes his mask off. And he has the face of a child. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yep. What? Like Jason takes Manhattan? Hey. <laughs> Big old, l- little, b- little baby head. So, oh, God. So here's the, th- the problem. And then, uh, hang on. We're oh, not oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you think this is the stupidest it gets? <laughs> <laughs> it gets dumber. Michael wakes up and starts choking her to death. Uh-huh. Does he still have the baby face when he does that? <laughs> yep. Uh... Amanda wakes up, turns out that was a nightmare. Okay. Oh, thank God. I was holding my breath. <laughs> um, she walks over to her window and sees Michael watching her, cuts to her, cuts back. He's gone. So what happened? Was the movie a dream <laughs> or just that one scene? <laughs> I have no fucking clue. Okay. It's a mystery, guys. Yeah. The problem with that one, besides the character being stupid because we've seen the other movies we know he's not a good guy the baby head yeah yeah and also her mother was almost murdered by him they, it sounds like they're pulling off the trick from friday the 13th of the girl putting on jason's sweater and pretending to be the mom yeah yeah to like coax them into a lullaby or tommy jarvis doing yes. the same thing yeah. yeah now this does have an alternate ending oh, oh no cool an alternate ending to something never made <laughs> there was a second draft yeah this is the one with robert de niro and dakota fanning in the <laughs> hospital <laughs> yeah so instead of Loomis running in and shooting Michael, he stabs him with a syringe of poison, <laughs> and then Michael takes it out and stabs him back, Cute. and they both die. Oh, they fluid bond. Oh my, just like Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. <laughs> and then the ambulance scene plays out pretty much the same. Oh, man. That's that's not great, because that's how you get diseases, sharing needles. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> what if they just kept going, and then Loomis takes it out of him <laughs> and, pulls it out again. and stabs Michael again? <laughs> And then they just they just stab each other back and forth forever. Yeah. It's like that scene in Letter Kenny where yeah. they keep hitting each other with the, yes. the uh, insulin. <laughs> All right, JT, do you have a title for this one? Um, God. I don't know. Not really. Uh, okay. I was, I was trying to think of a play on Sister Act. <laughs> uh, we could call it Halloween, Halloween 4, 4, Back, in, back in the Habit. Yeah. <laughs> back in the Habit. <laughs> what about you, Dave? Oh, boy. Uh, Halloween 4, Cry Baby Cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only thing I could think of because of the hide and seek stuff was... Uh, uh, Halloween 4, Ready or Not, or yeah. something like that. Nothing funny. Sorry. Keep going. This bit's done. Keep going. <laughs> okay. And now, the third and final unused script for Halloween 4, which is by far my fucking favorite. Okay. This is the MTV one? It is referred to as the MTV Halloween. Okay. Yeah. And the tagline is, Evil arrives in the Windy City. Evil arrives tonight. <laughs> Evil, Evil arrives, arrives tonight. tonight. <laughs> Evil comes tonight. <laughs> 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 So it starts out at the end of Halloween 2, they are helicoptering Michael's body to a hospital in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. And by, by by that, I mean, they have... Via rope, strapped Michael. <laughs> oh, no. so he's hanging out of the hospital? <laughs> Just hanging from a helicopter. <laughs> yes. Y'all, have you ever seen that video of the person being airlifted? Yes. Out? It was a 70 year old woman. <laughs> <laughs> Just spinning. <laughs> <laughs> So it's so awful. It's so funny. Yes, imagine that, but it's Michael Myers burned to a crisp. Incredible. Uh, so well, that puts the fires out. <laughs> they're flying him to Chicago, mm-hmm. and the rope snaps, <laughs> <laughs> and, and his body just falls into Lake Michigan. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah! I have to have a slide whistle for sure. If they're gonna do that. <laughs> so they they that's, drop. I, you know what? I, I don't even need to hear anymore. I think that that's oh, perfect. No. Trust me, it gets better. Okay, all right. <laughs> they lose the body in Lake Michigan. Yeah. Yep. Hard cut to ten years later. Okay. Oh, oh God. Right. Doctor Death has him. You can kind of do that with the beginning of five with with Michael floating down that river. You yeah. can just cut that footage back in. <laughs> now this was written. Before they knew that Jamie Lee Curtis wasn't coming back. Oh. So Lori Strode is our main character again. Okay. So Lori Strode living in Chicago 
editor of a magazine yes. is the epitome of an 80s, a strong 80s businesswoman. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, imagine the suits, the pantsuits. The pantsuits. Oh my, g- the shoulder pads on oh. JLC in this movie. Oh, they're just doing Devil Wears Prada, but with Jamie Lee Curtis? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. She has suppressed all of her memories of the first two movies. Huh? Impossible, but keep going. Loomis <laughs> is her psychiatrist. Wait, hmm. wait a minute. <laughs> she is all set to interview the biggest rock star of the year oh. for her magazine. So that's that's where Jamie Lee's, that's where Laurie Strode's at in her life right now. I hope that rock star's a cameo. So it's Jamie Lee Curtis and Adam Ant in <laughs> <laughs> Halloween 4. And like, Loomis is trying to get her to like remember her memories. Yeah. She's happily married. She has a daughter named Steffi. Mm-hmm. Um, her husband seemingly has no idea about what she went through in the past. Okay. Which seems... Odd. Interesting. I think she, I think it's odd she doesn't have any memories of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is like when like Fright Night Two starts with Charlie saying vampires aren't real, yeah. and I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? <laughs> so Michael shows back up. Sem- again, not explained how. Well, it's the 80s. He was saved by a flock of seagulls. They, they <laughs> carried him to safety. Of course, of course. Michael somehow just shows up at the rock star's house mm-hmm. who. Lori's supposed to be interviewing the next day. Yeah. Murders the rock star <gasps> and his girlfriend. Okay. Steals his guitar. His leather pants. Oh, oh my God. God. His leather jacket. Fuck yes. His leather driving gloves and his Porsche that has the license plate. One maniac. I love this movie. <sighs> So he's so he's dressed like the driller killer from Slumber Party Massacre too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it should be noted in the script, he does the thing where like he picks up the keys, tosses them in the air, no, and catches them again. The fuck, fuck. He does not fuck. No, and then the just fuck, pedal to not. the fucking metal, <laughs> just fucking cruising the streets of downtown Chicago. He kicks his feet up on the dash and he goes, I could get used to this. <laughs> in one God. of maybe the best moments ever written into a Halloween script. Oh my god. Michael goes on a vehicular manslaughter rampage <laughs> in downtown Chicago. So like the Kurgan fucking <laughs> Highlander. There's a whole group of people standing outside a movie theater waiting in oh line to see Halloween 4. Wait, what? What? Why he just <laughs> mows them down in a Porsche? Yikes. So we're just getting we we're tossing all the rules out the window. No, no, nothing matters. Oh my nothing god! Matters. Just fucking mows them down on a sidewalk. That's this is like that Freddy versus Jason script I was talking about, where they it was a meta movie, and then halfway through they just forgot that these are fictional characters. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Oh, it also should be noted he is not referred to as Michael. Or the shape in the script. Oh. Because this is a slick motherfucker in this leather outfit. The greaser. The silhouette. That is kind of cool. I kind of like that. Yeah. This is the empty. This is a sexy Halloween movie, guys. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want a scene where he, like, takes a comb and, like, Danny Zuko's his hair that's on the mask. (laughs) Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so he's got the the comb. He combs his hair, Mm -hmm. hits a button, switchblade, kills a guy. Love it. Right after. Love it. Yeah. I want to see the scene where someone throws a piece of paper in the trash can and then he comes out of it, like in the AHA video. <laughs> I want to do some finger snapping while he's going down some stairs. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still like completely stiff. Like he doesn't like do little hand gestures. Just his hands are by his side, by his side, and he's still just snapping as he's walking. <laughs> yeah, and the finger goes. You know what? I kind of want to see a Halloween musical now that mm-hmm. you mentioned that, Mally. Yeah. Now, now, now that I'm hearing it with the snaps and everything, a greaser, a greaser, Michael Myers in the fifties sounds amazing. I'm fucking in. I'm fucking down. So where does this go? Where like <laughs> in the trash? So <laughs> it ends in a fight in Lori's backyard. Oh, like f- her husband just like leaves in the middle of the movie. Cool. I gotta go. Bye. <laughs> He's like, like literally her husband learns about her past. He's like, huh? No, fuck all of that. Wow. And just fucks off. Cool, real cool guy. <laughs> so it ends with like a fight between Lori and Michael in her backyard. Mm-hmm. And he, he and she ends up electrocuting him with a downed power line. Okay. Nice. And then he just catches fire and explodes. <laughs> of, okay. Between Hellraiser and this, a lot of explosions for no reason. Yeah. A lot of exploding. Yeah. It should be noted, th- after this draft, they did learn Jamie Lee Curtis was not returning. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, oh, fuck. So they did a draft of this 
where Lori gets killed in the beginning and like her assistant becomes the protagonist <laughs> or something. Okay. Why not? It's not great, but I want to see this movie. Halloween 4, Rock and Roll Nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I, Halloween 4, I ran so far away. <laughs> Halloween 4, how Michael got his groove back is what nice. I came up with. <laughs> if, he's, if he looks like a greaser, it's Halloween 4, you're the one that I want. <laughs> uh, Halloween 4, when Michael met Lori. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Two movies ago, apparently. <laughs> they came together. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> Michael without a cause, Halloween 4. <laughs> Honestly, I I wish I could have seen that movie as bad. I, like it sounds like it would have been terrible, but also like pure '80s cheese, which yeah. I still gravitate to quite a bit. Oh yeah, Sa- seeing is believing for sure. <laughs> <sighs> Can you um, like Michael wouldn't be able to sneak up on anyone in this fucking movie. He's clad in pure leather. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing worse would be putting him in like a fucking like windbreaker outfit. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys see um? That Catherine Bigelow movie, The Loveless, with Willem Dafoe. Yes, yeah. Not a good movie, but that's just no, all no I'm plot. thinking about now is, yeah, zero plot. It's just all Michael vibes. in that outfit. Yeah. Just, I think that'd be great. I, I'm into that. Well, I'm picturing him dressed like Val Kilmer in The Doors. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, James Dean. That's what I'm seeing, too. Yeah. All right. Well, any other tidbits, Mallory? Is that it? That is all for the unmade Halloween four script. Fantastic. Oh, incredible. Incredible research. Um. Well... I, I got nothing else following forward, fellas. Anything else before we go? No, I think we nailed it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, listener, if you've got some thoughts or want to provide some feedback on Halloween 4, colon, the return of Michael Myers, <laughs> uh, you can do so by emailing us at the silver linings playlist at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can DM us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, or even post something on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. Uh, and of course, we ask if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Smash it. Yeah. Some would say to smash. I'm asking you to gently press. <laughs> Very like Michael with that thumb to that guy's forehead just press that button <laughs> sure sure leave us some fe- uh, some feedback and a rating we would greatly greatly appreciate it send runes <laughs> send runes uh, please <laughs> um and yeah i i got nothing else except clue for next week's episode we're going back to another we're going to another franchise one that mm-hmm. i don't think we've done before Mm-mm. so uh nathan it's your pick so why don't you give us a clue for what we're talking about next week next week The buzz is back. Okay. (laughs) All right. We're all getting haircuts. That's right. I'm getting a a big bowl of chili for next week's episode. Mm. The secret is the meat. Yeah, that's, of course, no chili can be complete without the the meat. (laughs) The meat. I know we're making a joke, but damn, that chili sounds so good. It really fucking does. (laughs) Yeah. Well, JT, thanks for finishing your residency here with us. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe we'll see you soon. Yeah. Next time, if there's a a hint of a Halloween movie in the air, Mm -hmm. maybe we'll have you back. Probably not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's fun. At this point, I think we've you've heard of Halloween, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm gonna go see the new one, but like, wait, there's a new one? No, I'm I, I, are you familiar with the syllables that sound like ha and low <laughs> and ween, right? In that combination, yeah. You love ween, <laughs> that ba- the band Night of, Night of the Weed. That's what you're into. Yeah, right? yeah. You love the band Low, also. <laughs> yeah, and as always, yeah, for real. Uh, first of all, rest in peace, oatmeal. Second of all. Of course, we got to say rest in peace to Donald Pleasance. We've got to. We have to. There's no doubt about it. And uh, the fuck is oatmeal? <laughs> <laughs> As always, Jamie's in North. <laughs> no, no, no. Excelsior. 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 Oh, look at us. Oh. Hello YouTube! If you've made it this far, thanks! Could you do us one more favor? Could you hit those like and subscribe buttons? Maybe leave us a comment on what you think of the show. We'd really appreciate it. Join us again next week for an all new episode. Bye!